George Jones. It's a pretty ordinary name for a guy whose life and talent were anything but ordinary. It wasn't just the country music world that loved George. Frank Sinatra once called him the second best singer in the world. And James Taylor and Elvis Costello both liked George Jones so much they each wrote songs for him. Now whether you're a country music fan or not, that kind of respect deserves attention. Take me, take me to your darkest room. Close every window, bolt every door. The very first moment I heard your voice, I'd be in darkness no more. Take Me was the first song George and Tammy Wynette released as a single. The first in a long string of hit songs they recorded together as husband and wife. The very first moment I saw your smile, it would be like heaven to me. Even after they split up, they kept on singing together which makes sense. They had every chance to kill each other as husband and wife, and each of them took a stab at it at least once. George Jones named his backing band the Jones Boys. They were actually real brothers, Don, Gary, and Arnie Adams, and they spent more time on the bus with George than just about anybody. We was playing in uh, uh, Bandera, Texas one night. We would open up for George sometimes. And he was out in the crowd drinking at a table. Thank you very much. Right now we'd like to introduce our boss to you. We'd like for everybody to get together. Give a great big hand. The America's number one country singer, George Jones. <laughs> He threw the whiskey bottle at me on the bandstand. It missed me about that far. When we finally got done that night, well, we just walked off the stage what it was. We quit. Went and started loading the car and trailer up, and I heard Graffle shuffling behind me. When I was putting stuff in, and I turned around, and he took a swing, and I took the trailer door and hit him in the face with it <laughs> and knocked him down. And the sheriff was standing down there, and he said, why don't we do with him, Don? And I said, put him in jail. <laughs> <laughs> so they put him in jail, and I took his car and went home. <laughs> he called us and fired us the next day. <laughs> he had fired him four or five times before that ever happened. He got to be kind of like Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> George came from humble beginnings in Vider, Texas. Songwriter Peanut Montgomery and his wife Charlene were running buddies with him for decades. We were close, uh, as I guess buddies could get, you know. I'd tell him I love him. And he said, now, Peanut, if we were any closer, we'd be gay. <laughs> <laughs> George came from the big thicket. It's a little community there in Vider. Tall pines, and everybody there was like poverty people, but they didn't know they were poverty because everybody lived the same life. So one had just about as much as the other. And in the thicket, they had their own little set of rules and standards and values, and they stuck by those. Long before the good people of East Texas had figured out how to make crystal meth, they made moonshine, which was also illegal. So it stands to reason that a boy from the big thicket would get his first number one hit with a song about moonshine. Yeah, I see these liquor came and he said, I'm tough. I think I want to taste that pot. And the way he sang and, and phrased his words, I don't think nobody can even come close to him. <laughs> <laughs> 